There's something very special about cars. Well, not just cars, motorbikes, trucks, all of these sort of things. They're a bit different to other sort of machinery you might buy. People don't get quite as excited about things like washing machines and dishwashers. Well, some people do, but let's not talk about them. Cars are a kind of uh, a special case because they represent more than that. They're freedom. They allow you to live in one place and work in another. They allow you to go on holiday and visit friends. And that is something really fundamental to the human spirit, being able to go out on adventures, but also just seeing people that you, you wouldn't normally be able to see. That kind of freedom is really important to us, and cars are the embodiment of that. But there's more to it than that as well, because cars are self-expression. Um, even if you don't modify your car in any way at all, the type of car you buy says something about who you are and what you're doing with your life. Now, some people have no interest in their cars whatsoever. There's just a thing they have to do to go about their business. That's fair enough. But to other people, it's much more than that. And particularly when you get into modified cars and customising, it really is a brilliant art form in its own way. Self-expression, freedom, the ability to do things, go places. That's quite an amazing thing. And it's not surprising then that it brings people together in a community. And the car, bike, truck communities are really, really impressive places because people instinctively want to help each other. If someone says they're having trouble getting a, a bolt out from their suspension they're trying to fix, people will naturally try to come together and help them. And that's a brilliant community spirit. There is something really, really, really special about you lot and what you do and the way everyone pulls together. And I think in times like these where there seems to be a lot of division and people separating each other out, that community spirit of people coming together for a common cause, whether it's cars, bikes, trucks or whatever, that united spirit and that spirit of trying to help each other is something we really should focus on at the moment. It's brilliant. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. So are you. Now, all of this work on cars, particularly classic cars and the older things, can only happen if you've got the right skills to do it. And a lot of you enjoy learning new things and finding out how to do bits and pieces on your own car. And that's great. Skills training is something fundamentally important. If we lose skills, then we lose the ability to maintain these things, and that means these things will disappear. No two ways about it. There's no point in this stuff just being a museum exhibit. I mean, there's a place for museums, don't get me wrong. But these things, they're the closest we can make to a living machine. They need to be out there, they need to be working, they need to be doing things. You need to see them, to feel them, to experience them. And if we can't maintain them, if we haven't got the skills to keep them going, that will be lost, and that will be a tragedy. Not only is it a tragedy because these machines will be lost, but also because these traditional skills help us when we're making new things. Now, the mainstay of my business here is uh, making highly modified vehicles, and a lot of those are based on prototype cars or very new vehicles that have just come out onto market. And so we use a whole range of skills from being able to muck around with a computer's, with a car's brains with the PC, um, to panel beating, to making wiring looms, suspension modifications. All of these things require different skills from different people. And not everybody can do everything. And it's important to recognize that certain people are good at certain things and other people are other things. And just because you're struggling at one particular area doesn't mean that you're rubbish. It just means that's not your area. Something else absolutely will be. For instance, body and paint. I know the theory. I can teach the theory. I have not got the patience to do it. Now, my mate Bradley over there, he is a brilliant painter. He does phenomenally good work. He's got what it takes to do that. I haven't. I can do mechanical stuff, I can do electrical stuff. Other people might struggle. So everyone's their own individual. And if you're struggling at one particular skill, don't think that that writes everything else off. There'll be something out there that's for you. Skills transfer is a very important thing, particularly in this day and age. We don't want these traditional skills to die out. 
If they do, then people will come across problems and they won't be able to solve them. And it might not just be on old vehicles. It might be on a new problem they're trying to solve, someone designing a new bridge or a new house or even a part of a computer, maybe the, the screen lid hinge or something. And they have to go through that whole process of development and discovery again, whereas someone who's used to those old skills will say, oh yeah, what you need is one of these. Done it before. So skills transfer is very important. Now you might have seen some posts from the Association of Heritage Engineers. If you haven't, I would encourage you to go and have a look at them. Um, they're doing some phenomenal work helping this skills transfer occur. It's really, really important. Um, and you yourself, you can learn skills. We should always be learning all the time. I know I am. Um, I have to do formal training to keep my CPD, continuing professional development going all the time. But also I'm learning from all sorts of other people. Um, people who come into the workshop and do a job, they'll do things differently to me. And I'm always watching and learning. You learn things from the strangest places as well. People who you wouldn't think, mm, there's always something there to be learned. So have a look at the Association of Her Heritage Engineers. Um, have a look at the Heritage Skills Academy as well. Uh, and if there's something there that takes your fancy, then go for it, start doing that. But also, if you're one of these people who's got one of these traditional skills, think about how you can help transfer that to a new generation. Maybe you're particularly good at lead loading bodywork or splicing wires together on old Lucas electrical systems. Whatever it is that you've got, think about how you can transfer that to new people. And it's not just young people coming into the industry from the first, first time, though those are absolutely vital, but also other people who are transferring from other industries which might be struggling at the moment or they want to do something different with their lives. There's a whole range of people who can benefit from learning these skills. So if you've got these skills, think about how you can start transferring them to other people. Don't let these things end when your career finishes. You know, if you go for retirement or you decide to do something else with your life, all that experience that you've had, it shouldn't just stop at that moment. It should carry on with someone else. That's my belief anyway. Um, I would also like to say a quick point about Mission Motorsport at this stage because uh, a lot of what you've seen over this weekend is supporting that charity who are very close to my heart. Um, I've been working with them since the beginning and uh, as with all charities at this time, they're struggling. A lot of the activities that usually generate the funds that they rely on to do their good work, those activities can't happen at the moment. So they're relying on goodwill from people like you um, to, to help them out. So have a look at Mission Motorsport, see what they do and try and help if you can. That would be a great thing to do. Now, when it comes to skills transfer, this is something I've been thinking about. What's my place in all of this? Have I got a duty? I think probably I have got a duty to pass on those things that I've learned. I've been in the car industry for over 30 years. Prototype, experimental vehicles, racing vehicles, all sorts of things. And there's a lot of stuff, obviously, that, that I've learned in that time, and a lot of skills and things that should be passed on to other people. So I've been thinking, and I'm thinking that I am going to start running training courses from this workshop, showing people some of the stuff that I've learned. I think it's not only a good idea, it's probably something um, of a duty to pass those skills on. I'm going to start off with some simple courses like um, car electrics for classic car enthusiasts who don't know their ohms from their amps. We'll start off with the easy stuff and then we'll work up to the more complicated stuff like how to do massive modifications on vehicles and probably how to convert your classic to electric. I think uh, a lot of people will be interested in that. So I'm going to start running courses here. Um, have a look at the Association of Heritage Engineers, see what other stuff that they're promoting um, and try to get involved. This is a great community. I'm very proud to be part of it. Um, enjoy talking to you and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs>